In today's busy world, we face many daily activities that could easily put stress and strain on our necks. Stress and strain on our upper necks can trigger a type of dizziness called cervicogenic dizziness. In this video, we're going to look at some of the best tests for ruling in cervicogenic dizziness. Welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a board-certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialist Physical Therapy Center located in Jacksonville, Florida. For today's uh, episode, we're going to do part two of the best tests for cervicogenic dizziness. Last week, we uh, put out a video where we talked about the best test for ruling in neck problem. We also defined cervicogenic dizziness a little bit, and we did some strength testing and some physical tests as well. For today's episode, we're going to recap a little bit of what we talked about on the last episode, but we're also going to talk about special tests. Special tests are unique tests that you can do at home to possibly diagnose or rule in or help us be able to better understand if you might have cervicogenic dizziness. Okay, so let's recap a little bit. We talked about cervicogenic dizziness as a definition. So to define cervicogenic dizziness, this is a dizziness that's often triggered by the upper neck. You have seven neck vertebra, but C1, 2, and 3 is very neurally sensitive. It's uh, rich with nerve receptors called proprioceptors. When your upper neck is sore or tight or unstable, it disrupts this uh, proprioceptive flow, and that can lead to dizziness or disequilibrium. You feel kind of off balance. We mentioned in the previous episode that there's been some studies looking at this, like Ryan and Cope. Doctors Ryan and Cope in 1955, they were testing, and they injected anesthetic drugs into their upper necks to test to see what would happen if they disrupted the upper neck. And what happened was it triggered dizziness, disequilibrium, and they lost their balance to that side. 1979, a doctor named Dijon did the same experiment. He got the same results. So cervicogenic dizziness is quite prevalent in our uh, communities today because we do live in the digital age. We are all, all of us are using uh, tablets and phones computers, etc., and neck pathology is pretty rampant. Here in the United States, studies say that neck pain is as prevalent as 80 to 90 percent of everyone that lives here. So we know that that's a big prevalent thing in our society. We know that dizziness is pretty common as well for a lot of folks, especially as we get older. So that's a good definition of cervicogenic dizziness. For our last episode, we talked about uh, if you have dizziness, but you may or may not know for sure if you have a neck problem, maybe we need some easy home tests to do. So in our last episode, we talked about using range of motion. You would turn your neck all the way to the left, all the way to the right, maybe a little bit up, down, and then we would do side to side, assessing if you have pain, tightness, discomfort, or if that triggers dizziness. So that was one of the tests we did in the last episode. We also talked about using palpation. You could take your thumb and you could gently press into the base of the head uh, right below the skull. The very first uh, area you're going to press into is going to be close to C1. So C1, C2, and C3. And you would do that on both sides. If this reproduces dizziness, this reproduces a headache or neck pain, then this is a positive test that you have something going on in your upper neck. Lastly, we did a strength test where we lay down on a bed, tucked our chin in, and then you lifted your head off the pillow maybe that much, and you look to see if you can hold that for 30 seconds without losing that crease back onto the pillow. So if you tested positive for the palpation assessment, the range of motion assessment, and the strength test, now we're starting to look like this is a possible case 
of um, cervicogenic dizziness. In the last episode, we also mentioned some subjective uh, complaints that could tip us off that you might be having cervicogenic dizziness. Subjective complaints would be the verbal things that you feel are characteristic of your symptom. For cervicogenic dizziness, very commonly the dizziness might stay for minutes, hours, days, months. It lasts for a long time. For classic vertigo, sometimes we think of vertigo as the crystals have been dislodged in your ear. That's usually a brief episode, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute. But if the dizziness is lasting off and on all day long, and you have obvious signs of neck problem, um, these could be characteristic of a cervicogenic dizziness disorder. Okay, now that we've recapped from the last episode, let's look at one of our first special tests. This first special test is going to be called the head-neck differentiation test. For the head-neck differentiation test, this was studied in a study in 2019 by Trelevin et al., where they looked at the efficacy of this test for cervical dizziness. The test was performed on participants that didn't have dizziness at that time, so its validity may have some question mark. However, we're going to go with the best special test that we have out there, and we'll combine that with our subjective exam and our other physical exam, put all these points of interest together, and that's where we get a much better clinical picture. So for this test, the head-neck differentiation test, it had a 90% specificity in that Trelevin et al. study. The way the test works is we want to differentiate between dizziness that might be provoked from moving the ears from dizziness that could be provoked from moving the neck. If I rotate my head to the left and I come back, in this scenario I've moved the ears and the neck, so it's hard to differentiate. Was that moving the vestibular system or moving the ears, or was that dizziness because I moved my neck? So the way this head-neck differentiation test works is that the participant closes their eyes, and then with their feet, they rotate their body about 45 degrees, and then they rotate again 45 degrees, and they would keep doing this a few times to see if this provokes dizziness. If moving the body while the head is fixed still produces dizziness, then the idea is this may be cervical dizziness. In this scenario, the ears never technically moved, so the vestibular system should have had minimal um, disruption, but the neck continued to move by moving the body on the neck. So that is the head-neck differentiation assessment for cervicogenic dizziness. For our next special test, this test is called the cervical torsion test. The cervical torsion test, also looked at in 2019 by Trelevin et al., but was found to have a 98% specificity, a little bit better than the head-neck differentiation assessment. This test is similar than, than the previous test that we looked at, the head-neck differentiation. Same idea, we're going to move the body while the head stays fixed. The uh, person that's doing this would have their eyes closed while they move their body. You use your legs, you move 45 degrees. Again, if you were doing this, uh, the, your person being tested would have their eyes closed. You hold this for about 30 seconds, and then you come back, and you would repeat on both sides. If having your torso moved while your head is still causes dizziness, maybe uh, disequilibrium, rapid eye movements, then this could be considered a positive test for cervicogenic dizziness. Now let's look at our next special test. For our last special test that we're going to look at, we're going to look at a test called the Smooth Pursuit Neck Torsion Test. Tegel et al. in 1998 researched this test on whiplash-associated disorders, folks that have suffered a whiplash disorder that had dizziness, and they found it to have a 90% sensitivity and a 91% specificity for ruling in cervicogenic dizziness, but had a really good outcome. The way this test works 
is the person being tested would look at a pin, and then the pin would be moved into this kind of H pattern, and then it would be repeated. I follow with my eyes, but I don't move my head. That's going to set a baseline. And then what we do is we have the person move their torso so that their neck is about 45 degrees turned to the left. Then we have them repeat the test. And we would then have the person turn the other way and repeat the test again. If you notice that you can follow the pin pretty accurately with your head in neutral, don't have a lot of dizziness, and your eyes are following pretty well, but when we turn your torso and crank your neck, this could disrupt some of that proprioceptive information at the upper neck that we talked about, and suddenly it might be difficult for you to track the pin, or you might have a backwards eye beating moment, or it just causes dizziness. If you notice when your head's turned, it causes dizziness, but when your head is neutral, it does not cause dizziness, that would be a positive for cervicogenic dizziness using the Smooth Pursuit neck torsion test. Well, thanks for watching today's episode on special tests for cervicogenic dizziness. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Remember, these uh, videos are great for helping if you're at home, but they never take the place of a good medical exam. If you can get in with a good medical practitioner, that's always preferred. But if you're somewhere where you don't have access um, to a professional, maybe these tests that can help out a little bit, ruling in some cervicogenic dizziness. Well, we appreciate you guys watching and uh, stay tuned for next week. We're going to have another video out for you as well. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to receive more videos like this in the future on physiotherapy-related tips. It's goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.